um, it's really unfortunate. I, I don't even know where to start from. 32,000. Let's leave the jar on it. Within a period of two weeks, 32,000. I remember when um, last week we saw in a report where our president said concerning the medical um, practitioners, as doctors and nurses, all of them, where he said that we should not bother about those that have left Nigeria. We, we should not even bother about those that are planning to leave. That they will do everything in place they can to make sure that we fill the vacants. And within two weeks, we have 32,000 planning to leave Nigeria. Mr. Weld, is this not worrisome? Is it not something that our leaders should sit, I mean, go back to the drawing board and know what is going on? I, I think I want to shock you because for me, Please I'm, shock not, me. I'm not surprised. You're not surprised? That's a shock. I'm, I'm not surprised because I don't want to be sentimental about it. Uh, the integrity of the story I want to see is that uh, half of that uh, 32,000, 15,000 is already on waiting to be bio biometrics to be captured. Mm. I'm, I'm interested in the efficiency of the process, the reliability that is accruing to that process. You remember that before now, it was as if like it's never going to come. Mm. You know, you go to the the passport offices, whether here in River State or in Abuja or in Lagos, man, you need to go and see the suffering. As high as 300,000. Some are paying just to have maybe a 10-year passport line. So, the point is, yes, in some corners, there will be worrisome, but oftentimes they are not in the storyline is that there is a such light on those who are leaving Nigeria. What about those who are coming into Nigeria? I want to believe that there are other persons within the west coast of Africa, the, the share boundary. Those, there are other persons who are coming into Nigeria. Mr. Wells. Our population is well over 200 million. There are people coming in into mm, Nigeria. Yes. But here, the, the, the problem we are having here is, if, if you, out of 10, majority that are leaving, they are not certain about the kind of job they are going to do. They don't, they're not going there for school, for education, educational purpose. Majority are just living with the mindset that when I leave Nigeria, I'm going to search for something to do. And then when you go out there, you see many of them doing all these menial jobs. But for, if you check majority coming into Nigeria, there is something they are coming to do. So when you are saying that people are, are, are coming, yes, life is all about movement. People go, people come. But in our own case, look at the number of persons that are planning to live in two weeks' time. Just, let's assume that they all get the um, uh, certification to move. This is passport, not visa. So let's just have that understanding. It is not everybody that will collect passport. That's what that I'm saying. Let, let, let's assume that they all get, definitely, after passport, they will and proceed. And also, every person that is you know, trying to migrate, whether to Europe or mm. whether to the Americas. There is a reason for going, because there are guidelines. Some are going under the pretense of, you know, getting higher education. You said pretense. Yeah, yeah. Because we, we, it's quite obvious. But you said pretense. Yeah, yeah. All so, right. so some are living under the pretense that they are going for higher education. Mm -hmm. Some, uh, the percentage of higher education is very high because otherwise some of these foreign nationals will not be coming up with policies to streamline the influx because many will go on as a student and then with the intention that family will not later join. But we can see over time since the beginning of this year that the British embassy, uh, British government as a way, the America, keep on reviewing, you know, procedures and guidelines to merit visa application. So to tell you that if, there, if the measures of a visa application is not being met or is met, implying that they will review because of the traffic. The traffic is, I have no doubt about that. But the point is that uh, the reality on ground is not something that you can wish away because if the social amenity and social security is guaranteed here, the traffic of immigration will not be high. 
So the bottom line for me is the efficiency of the process. Everybody will leave if they have the means of living. And some who want to stay back, like okay. some of us who want to stay back, we also want to stay back. But the point is that I don't want to beam the such light on what is not working. So the bottom line for me here is that will this process continue and sustain that I can sit somewhere in my house or in my office and I apply for my children or for my work, as the case may be, and without giving some you know level of kickbacks or I have to know somebody in Abuja because my passport should be you know will, will be issued. That's just my own position. Uh, Mr. Ura, we have um, in a report where. Of course, our president, at the beginning of this administration, they actually went out there to tell an international body to collaborate with us in order for us to be able to fight insecurity and also stabilize economy in the country. But for the past few months now, since last year, it, need, it seems nothing is happening as it stands now. And then, like I said earlier, that we had in a report last week where the president came up to say that um, anybody that wants to leave is good to go. Others, they will um, train others to uh, fill in that gap. Do you think that all of this is what is adding together the insecurity, the economy, is what is really making Nigerians to go? Because... It, it doesn't, they call it a greener pasture, but how green is it? Is this really is over there? First and foremost, I, I would like to congratulate the Minister of Interior. He, he has tried to do something that for a couple of years has not been able to be achieved. You know, my, my prayer is that it becomes sustainable, that people can apply for their passports and get them. But that being a part, I, let me talk about the country and people living because I do not stand on the same part with the president. I think the president has to sit down and ask himself and his economic team if their policies are really the right kind of policies that, are, that can really take Nigeria out of the quagme that we find ourselves. I can give you just indices. Nigeria is the most populated African nation with over 200 million people. Our annual national budget, what we are expected to spend for the year is just $29 billion, about $28, $29 billion. When you change it from the Naira Valley back to dollars, it's a shame because South Africa is 55 million people and South Africa's annual budget is over $600 billion. You can see the, the difference, the gap. Mm. I can give you another example. Brazil is 280 million people, a couple of millions larger than we are. And Brazil's national budget for the year is $1.1 trillion. So it shows you that there's a lot. There's a lot. That's why if you see Nigerians leaving, they are leaving because of these figures I'm calling to you. Because you can't have, when you go to did, India... Do they actually know the figures? No, no, the figures. See, when even if you do not know the figures, it reflects on our day-to-day -day life, the money we spend and the money we earn. Let me give you an example. In India... As at last year, I don't know how much a rupee now is to a naira. As at last year, when we don't even have this exchange rate, unskilled minimum wage for unskilled in India, when you change it from rupees to naira, it was about 155,000 naira mm. monthly. That's unskilled labor in India, and you're giving minimum wage in Nigeria for 30,000 naira. You can, I'm just trying to make you understand the indices. The problem is not about if prices go up. The problem is, is there money in people's pockets? The problem is, does Nigeria have a robust middle class? If a president comes and tells you that, I do not worry about the people that are going, it's a very wrong statement. He has to be worried because some of the best brains in the country are getting frustrated and they are leaving. This, we don't have, this is no time to make political statements. This is a time to, for everybody to roll up their sleeves. And it starts from leadership because if the people see that leadership is ruling up their sleeves and doing the hard job, Nigerians are the easiest people to govern. When Nigerians see you're doing the right thing, they will do in action. Let me explain to you why we are not doing the right things. And why <laughs> you're saying that that's your own opinion because no, I know I'm, I know I know um, um, okay. the former president said that Nigerians are the most difficult. The former president he killed our economy for eight years. He's but he, most, he said Nigerians are the most team. difficult. I'm, I'm, set I'm, of saying, I'm saying it on live TV. Govern. I don't care who's the, the easiest. The, the, the former president was the worst thing that happened to Nigeria's economy. But let's leave that for another day's story. Now, President Tinumbu 
as our president saying that if Nigerians are leaving, they are going to train other people. That's a political statement. That's not a right statement because we have a big problem in Nigeria. We have an economy to fix. We have an economy where money has to be in circulation for people to be able to afford things. For you to be able to make an economy work, money has to be in circulation for there to create new for people to create new jobs, for people to create new business. 